And welcome to Lift FM 98.5, 103.3 FM, and 97.9 on your FM radio dial. And of course, we are worldwide at liftfm.com. And remember that all of our programs here on Second Chances are available whenever you would like. And it's as simple as this Advantage Radio Ministries.org. That's Advantage Radio Ministries.org. Click on Second Chances, and then scroll through and you can find any one of our guests at any time at your convenience here on Second Chances. And we are privileged to have with us tonight an author, a speaker, a preacher, a teacher, all kinds of things. Uh, where We would like to introduce to you Joy Payne. And Joy, thank you for joining us here on Second Chances. Greg, you are so welcome. It's a privilege to be a part of your ministry. Thank you so much, and it's a privilege to have uh, you on our program tonight. And you know, Joy, we're going to start off, and in, in, in it's always interesting how I meet people and people come to me, and, and I think that you kind of were referred to me by somebody I know or through an email. I'm not quite sure how we got together, but it's. Uh, do you remember how we actually uh, got in touch with each other? Actually, I was researching uh, radio stations that I thought I'd be interested in uh, telling, uh, sharing my life and sharing the book with, and I came across your radio station. I called and I spoke to someone who was so pleasant. I said, yeah, this is something I really want to pursue, and spoke to you, and it was the same. So here I am. Well, amen. And it's always amazing how God does these things because, honestly— uh, I, you know, never really solicit for guests, although if you know me, I always mention, you know, if you have know somebody that has a testimony or wants to talk about, come to us. But the Lord just keeps sending people to us, and, and all we have to do is be obedient to bring them on the program. That's how great our God is. He really is terrific that way. Anyway, Joy, as, as we mentioned to you, uh, one of the things that uh, our program is really here to do, it's to give people the opportunity that don't know Jesus Christ as a Lord and Savior to... Uh, learn about him and to have the opportunity to get saved but we always like to start off by hearing a little bit about our guest about where they're from and, and were they raised in a Christian home about their early you know uh, teen, you know teen years through when they were born if you could just tell us a little bit about who you are well I am originally from Guyana which is in South America right next to Venezuela and um, I would, my parents would say I was raised in a Christian home, but it's not uh, a born-again believer. We were congregationalists. That's the Calvinistic arm uh, beliefs. And so you went to church. It was, uh, you know, the religious thing that we do a lot in, in um, some areas in the Caribbean, in the West Indies. And so I didn't know the Lord until I was uh, 30 actually, I really came to know the Lord. But I went to church, went to Sunday school, sang all the songs, but didn't know the Lord. Um, in uh, my country, I was a high school teacher, and uh, um, I migrated for two years, lived in Antigua, uh, and taught there. But once I came to the United States of America in the early 80s, I changed my uh, career my career path, and so I went into accounting, and so I did the whole full works uh, CPA, working at the, you know, the Merrill Lynch's, and, 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 and uh, those were the heydays, and so worked through my last um, stint in corporate America, 26 years, was at Citigroup, uh, senior vice president there in audit, an audit director, um, and so I've had a full life, I, I felt, both in the Caribbean and then here in the USA. And in 2008, I actually started a full-time ministry. And right now, it's women that we are catering to primarily. It's called Hearts of Blaze Ministry. And we have monthly conferences, quarterly retreats, uh, also setting up intercessory departments in, in, in churches, teaching people how to intercede, how to be spiritual warriors. So my life has, I feel sometimes I've lived a few lives. But it's very interesting all along. It's been very, very interesting. 
Now, the name of that uh, ministry for women was called Hearts Ablaze. Is that right? Yes, Hearts Ablaze. So, can you tell us a little bit uh, more about tell us a little bit more about that? That's uh, very interesting. Well, Hearts Ablaze. What you know, many times we we live this Christian uh, life. Uh, and many people find it a chore, it's boring, it's, it, 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 it's so difficult. And what this ministry does is to, to, to help to bring about wholeness, because oftentimes that's the reason why people are not enjoying the, the, the Christian walk, because people are hurt, they're wounded, um, hearts are shattered, and you're trying to navigate or circumvent, work around it. How do I serve the Lord? I'm not whole. But when you consider that Jesus Christ, when he went to the cross and he gave us that victory, it was complete. And he wants us to be whole. And so we're, we're helping people to move into the inner healing, identifying things that they've been carrying around for so long. Something like unforgiveness, that now you, you have bitterness and resentment and all those things that cripple and paralyze people. We're seeing that. I'm watching women who came in really shattered, really beaten down, and watch them like a flower just blossoming and looking at the beauty that comes forth. So the ministry is about wholeness, getting people to live whole lives, and, and doing so with a passion and, and with fire in their hearts. And I'm watching it happen before my eyes and thanking God mm. that he would see fit to remove me from corporate America and to so set me up to, to, to touch lives and impact lives in, a, in such a meaningful, uh, eternal way. Now, if someone would like to find out, before we get into other areas, if somebody would like to find out more about Hearts Ablaze, is there a website or a place they can go to find out more? I'm actually working on the professional website right now, and uh, it's going to be heartsablaze.org. Probably won't be ready until March, mid-March. But there is one that I worked on, and it's, it's good, it gives information, and it's called heartsoffireministry.com. So if people wanted to get information, it would be heartsoffireministry.com, and they'd find that information. Okay, so that's that's the word heartsoffireministries.com. Heart of fire. So oh, oh, of fire. Heartsoffireministry.com. Okay, very good. Now, uh, you have done so many things in your life. The question is, is the book that we want to talk about called Out of Solitude, Passion, and the subtitle is A Heart Captivated by God. Is this the first time that you've actually uh, have uh, dove into writing? Um, where it's been published. I love reading and writing. And uh, teaching English was one of the things I taught, English and Spanish. So English I taught love, love writing. And so I would always journal. I would always write. I, I would write love letters to God. I would talk to God. I mean, I, I love writing. And so what happened with this book, I always knew in my heart that the first book I would write would be about passion, because I'm a very fiery heart. That's who I am. That's, and so I, I knew it would be about passion, but I didn't know the time. I didn't feel it was the time. And so in 2010, 2010, I felt God saying to me, it's time. And so I knew passion. I started thinking, okay, let's see, what am I going to, what am I going to start with? What's going to be the first chapter? And the Holy Spirit dropped in my heart, you have the material. And Greg, I went to my journals, and I had so much material. I mean, I started to read them, and the Holy Spirit was working in my heart. I was crying, and I'm like, wow. So I literally had to get software and read. It was so much I didn't want to just, you know, enter all that data, read it, and then have it convert to text, and then uh, correct. So, so actually, I, I was uh, accumulating the information for years. I had about 18 years' worth of material. I didn't even use all of it. And so I used that, and, um, you know, refined as I went along, and there's the book that came forth. We're visiting with Joy Payne. She is the author of the book called Out of Solitude, Passion, A Heart Captivated by God. Uh, Joy, tell me about the process of actually getting it published. Did you have to present it to a whole bunch of different uh, publishers? And tell us how that all kind of unfolded for you. It's 
interesting. I am one who really believes that as you pray and you look to God, when God has called you to do something, he has a specific timing, and he knows all the details. Initially, when I started thinking about, okay, writing and timing, I had in mind the uh, publisher I would use. However, when it came time to actually make the move, in the same way as I got in contact with you, this just happened. It looked incidentally. But I felt that our universe was the publishing company I was supposed to use. And so I called them to see. I was never heard about our universe, but one day I was doing something totally unrelated to the book and publishing it. And there was our universe in front of me with all the details. It looked interesting. And I said, I'll check them out. And when I did, speaking to them the same way felt, yes, yeah, to go, go ahead. And I must tell you that the process was effortless. It was seamless working through them. I called them. We chatted once, decided on a date when I would submit the manuscript, did that. I think I did it on the 29th of uh, November, and the book was released on the 9th of January. It was just, we had two um, um, editing. They gave me the first round of going through, you know, whatever editing was needed. And then once more, a small round. And it just went, it was seamless, effortless, just a, a wonderful process. Mm. So I would say it was arranged by God, there was no doubt, and I just moved in the timing, and the grace was there at all ends. It, it, it was evident. Mm. So you realized you had the material, you had the publisher. Uh, tell us about the book, Out of Solitude, Passion, A Heart Captivated by God. Tell us a little bit about the, the book. So many times people ask, how do I keep my devotional times fresh? If I think of the woman that I interact with uh, in my ministry, as uh, some in uh, prayer, the intercessory ministry that I'm over. It's a difficult thing. People want to spend time with the Lord, but it's like they're gritting their teeth and saying, I've got to spend 30 minutes with God. It's difficult. Huh? And so people are asking, what do I do to just... I want it to be fun. I want to enjoy it. I want to look forward to just being with God, speaking with Him, enjoying Him, learning as I read the Word, as I interact with God. And so uh, this book is, along with your Bible, it's, it's to help you just feel the freedom to just enjoy God. And so you see yourself just coming aside, and the pieces, the devotional pieces, are meant to have you sit at God's feet and just be a God-gazer. Just as you read them, it just puts you into His presence. And you just want to talk to him. You just want to listen to him. It's put, putting away all the things, all the distractions, uh, that when you read, it opens up your heart. It does something. It, 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 it helps God to just captivate your heart. And so you can go on after, after that. There are people who, were, who have told me they'll read this and they start weeping. They start weeping. The presence of God is so real. And then here you are, your heart captivated. It's no more a, a, a heart a fight to, 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 to spend time with God, to read His Word. You want to. There is something, there's a tenderizing of your heart that happens. And so this book is, is meant to be a vehicle that can be used by God to do that, to captivate your heart so that you can see God in a fresh way and just enjoy Him. He draws you into his, his glorious presence. We're visiting with author Joy Payne of the uh, devotional book entitled Out of Solitude Passion, A Heart Captivated by God. We're going to talk more about the book, but uh, at this point, we'd like to find out, uh, Joy, where can one obtain a copy of this devotional? Well, it's on Amazon, and it's at Barnes & Noble, and it's also at iUniverse. So you can get it from Amazon, uh, Barnes & Noble, and iUniverse. One word, I, and then you, capital U, Universe. You can get them there. There are lots of other places that are selling, but some are selling only to retailers. Uh, but those are the three places that you can get copies directly, one, whatever number you want. There are also e-books. You can get the e-books 
from all three of these uh, distributors as well. Okay. Now, obviously, we're talking about a devotional book called Out of Solitude Passion, A Heart Captivated by God with Joy Payne. And uh, I guess one of the, the natural questions for me to ask would be, could you share with us one of the devotional pieces that is actually in this devotional book? I'd love to. And one I'll share is, it's called Your Thirsty Vessel. Heavenly Father, give me a hunger and thirst for you like I have never had before. I want to spend each day of the rest of my life lavishing you with love. My desire is to live on the mountain of God with hands that are clean, a heart refined by your fire and purged of every mess. When people look at me, they must see Jesus. When they listen to what I say, they must hear Jesus. They reflect on my actions. They must think Jesus. My God, let everything about me point people to you. I want the world to know how marvelous you are and how you specialize in picking up the messes, the derelicts, and transforming their lives. In spite of man's enmity with you, you come after us, knocking, wooing, and drawing. I am forever thankful for that blessed day when grace allowed me to peek at you. That peek stopped me in my tracks. It started to change my heart. It did some glorious and incomprehensible things. But that peak has now become a steadfast gaze, bringing wondrous transformation as I look and keep on looking at you. All I know is that you are lovelier and lovelier with each passing moment, and I thirst for you. It seems as if I'm always craving for you. Dad, fill this thirsty vessel as I sit in your presence, enjoying you and then what happens at the end of that you have a page where you journal your thoughts wow journal your thoughts as the holy spirit leads you we're visiting with joy Payne, talking about the devotional book out of solitude passion a heart captivated by god joy if someone were to say to you what would you like the readers of this devotional book, after they've read it and looked through it and and uh, have used it, what would you like them to walk away with as far as thoughts or feedback or what you were hoping that they would walk away with from using this devotional book? I would want them to enjoy God passionately. I would want them to be led to a place of intimacy where it becomes a lifestyle. Because when you realize that God wants you to talk with him, you speak to him, he speaks to you, you sit, you listen to him. And this book is helping you to do that, to break through all the religious riffraff and the I'm struggling and trying and, and just let God's grace work. And so you begin to enjoy that intimacy where God's presence is ever with you, where his presence is palpable in your life and it becomes lifestyle. Like, you know, I'm never alone. Like, you practice, I think of Brother Lawrence as a great example. Uh, we practiced God's presence, uh, and he knew what it was. I'm doing dishes, uh, or I'm going to the grocery store. God is with me. And then it becomes just a lifestyle. And there's a power, a boldness, a confidence, a uh, uh, victory that comes in knowing that. So it's meant to captivate your heart and to just usher you into living in God's presence, uh, in a wonderful way. And that's what I want to be the takeaway that people see. My life has really been changed. It's helped to position me to have my heart captivated and live in God's presence in, 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 that, in that wonderful way. Mm. There were two words when I was looking over your bio that uh, kind of stuck out to me. One of a, more of a personal uh, fashion, you used the word warrior. The um, church I go to is... is uh, they have an academy that uh, for Christian education, and they tell uh, you know their their students are all called warriors. So that got attention uh, to me. But the one thing that I really stood out to me was the fact is that you're very uh, very much into powerful prayer and intercessory and, and, and interceding and things like that. Talk to us about how 
prayer and intercession has is, is played a role for you in your Christian walk, which I'm sure is very evident in this book as well. Yes. And um, I, I, I say that intercession is the backbone, backbone, or prayer is the backbone of a victorious Christian walk. It really is. There's no getting away from it. And I remember when I just got converted, and I'm really trying, I was really trying in my, my energies, the energy of my flesh, to live for God. Was the Holy Spirit there? Yes. But you revert to what you know. And so here I was trying, and I realized I'm missing something. I would read the book of Acts, and I realized there's something there. The way they live, I don't have that power. I don't have that fight, that boldness. But I kept doing it. I kept, you know, I was a Sunday school teacher at my church and going through the motions. But then I had heard about uh, a church in, in Brooklyn. I'd always heard about this church as a great church, the presence of God. And I felt, I would tell people actually, go to that church. If they lived in Brooklyn, New York, that area, I would recommend the church, but I'd never gone there. And I felt, just go one so that when you recommend it, people, you can do it from firsthand your own experience. And I went into that church. And I live in the backwoods of Jersey, so it was quite a, a stretch to, to get there, but I did. And I went there, and the presence of God was so real. But that church is known for its intercession. And what God did was he put me in that church for 10 years, and he put me through, a, I call it boot camp training, boot camp. We would have, a, uh, I was in a ministry, the intercessory ministry. Every week you had to uh, provide seven hours of intercession. So you can decide if you break it up three and four or one night, you pray through the night seven hours. And I did Friday nights with my night. I prayed for seven hours. And also you covered one service when the pastor was preaching on Sunday. We have three services at that time at the church. You would be praying through that service. That's where I got training. I remember when I started first, uh, and you would go and lead. You would have to go out and lead and pray. We prayed in a room, a separate room. And I remember the first time I had to do it, I would tremble. My legs would start to shake. Up. And wherever I was in the prayer, I would just shut it down. In the name of Jesus, that prayer ended. But as people would be there beside you, and, you know, you're new, and they're, you're getting accustomed. And I don't know where it changed. And there's a boldness that came across, uh, that came along, uh, a warrior. I mean, it just happened. And I realized intercession is something that's caught. As you familiarize yourself, as you get into that surrounding, uh, there's something that happens. Uh, and so my whole life changed. It really did because of that. How I see things, how I know to fight in the spiritual realm, be that warrior, how to train others to be warriors, because that's what happened. Now, after about 10 years, what did God do? He had me come back to Northwest Jersey, and here I am in a church, Northwest Jersey, where I started out in that area. I'm now heading up the intercessory ministry at my church, teaching people how to war, how to fight. Because there's something that happens with standing as an intercessor and warring. And that's what God wants from us. Hmm. It just makes it clear. You mentioned at the beginning of your program that you were raised in a, in a church, so to speak. You sang the uh, hymns and went to service, but it wasn't until you were in your 30s that you had a walk with God. And of course, Joy, uh, this program is really on. The number one reason is to let people know that they can have that life that our guests talk about, that life where Jesus Christ is the Lord and Savior of their life. And I, I just know in my heart today, Joy, that there's somebody listening to this program that probably feels like you did before you were in your 30s, that they've been there, they've been through the motions, but they say, boy, I want that passion I want what she's got. So, Joy, the question is, would you be willing to lead us in prayer right now for people that don't know Jesus and have a relationship with him as their Lord and Savior and give them the opportunity to bring him into their heart? Yes, I'd be willing to do that. Please do. Hallelujah. And so um, for those who would like to ask the Lord Jesus into your life, into your heart, just repeat after me. Lord Jesus, I have been running around looking for answers in all the wrong places. 
but I believe that you came to this earth and died for me. And so today, I want to lay down my life. I am tired running. I am tired looking. I can feel the emptiness in my life. And so today, I thank you, Jesus, that you died for me. And so today, I come asking you to forgive me for all my sin. Forgive me for every filthy thing I engaged in. Forgive me for disobeying you. But today, I just want to throw myself upon you. And I want you to come into my life. I lay down my life. I want you to be my Savior. It's what you desire to be. Be Lord of my life. I lay it down. I thank you that even now, your blood is washing me clean. Your blood, even now, is washing me. I plunge into that blood. You're washing me of every filthy sin, every sinking thing. Even now, you're cleansing me. And I thank you. I thank you today that it's a new day. I thank you, my God, that you will show me your plan for my life. I give myself to you. You are my God. Help me to live for you today and evermore. Help me, Lord. I thank you. Our guest on Second Chances has been Joy Payne. Joy is the author of the book, Out of Solitude, Passion, a Heart Captivated by God. And Joy, one more time, if someone would like to obtain a copy of your book, how can they do it one more time? You can go to Amazon.com or BarnesandNoble.com or also iUniverse, and you will find the book, Out of Solitude, Passion, a heart captivated by God. And uh, you can let me know, like I mentioned before, you can get a hold of me at heartsoffireministry.com, and you'll see a phone number there, email address, so you can contact me, and uh, I'll welcome that just to be able to talk with you if you have any questions. Is that Hearts Hearts of Fire Ministry or Ministries? Ministry, one word. The end, the end. And one, one, the singular, Hearts of Fire Ministry. With a Y, okay. A y. Okay. Hearts of Fire Ministry.com. And the name of your organization for women is entitled? Hearts Ablaze, Hearts Ablaze Ministry. Okay, okay. We'd like to thank you, Joy, for being with us here on Second Chances. And we do invite you to check out the uh, devotional book. It's a wonderful one. If you are looking for the passion that Joy has, and uh, you're going to find it in this book for sure, Out of Solitude, Passion, A Heart Captivated by God. And we'd like to thank you, Joy, for being our guest here on Second Chances here at Lift FM. Thank you very much. Thank you so much for having me, Greg. It was a pleasure. It's been our pleasure, too. Tune in next week for more Second Chances right here at Lift FM, 98.5, 103.3 FM. And 97.9 on your FM radio dial. Remember, all of our programs are always available 24 hours a day, seven days a week. You can listen to your program that you would like to hear or go back and hear any other program at VantageRadioMinistries.org and click on Second Chances.